Paul in Ventura, California. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hi, Paul. Leo, you are an amazing resource. You and the show, I count on all the time for, to keep me on top of the latest info. Thank you so much for that. Thanks for calling. Sure. I used to, when I first moved to California, I moved to Petaluma. That oh! Was 1980, 1983. And nice. And it used to be the home of the wrist wrestling champion. That's and right. You know? Yeah, they have, you know, it's, uh, interest here in Petaluma and wrist wrestling seems to have waned. I don't know why. <laughs> but it is a beautiful town. Yeah, it is beautiful. And I had been back, like, uh, I don't know, 20 years later. I moved out after about three years, and it had changed significantly. Yeah, well, this was a, fa yeah, this, yeah, this was a farm community. Uh, but now, because we're an hour away from San Francisco, it is uh, as much a commute uh, you know, community, uh, a suburb of San Francisco as anything else. What can I do for you, though? I mean, let's talk tech, huh? Well, the fact that I moved there in 83 after high school might give you an indication of my age, but ah. because uh, of that, I and I was listening to a podcast the other day, and you were talking about wearing a hearing aid, yeah. and I was surprised to hear that, and I was curious, what model do you favor? Have you tried many? I haven't tried many. Um, so, uh, you know, I have a occupational uh, hearing loss because most people who work in radio wear headphones and uh, I've worked in radio for 40 years. I'm 60, so it's not unusual to start losing your hearing. My hearing's not so bad that I have to have a hearing aid. But I was very interested in modern hearing aid technology from a number of angles. One, nowadays hearing aids can be con used in conjunction with a smartphone and that gives you some interesting capabilities. But two, I think that their in-ear devices are rapidly going to be part of the wearable scene. Uh, Apple's clearly moving in that direction with their AirPods. You know, when you have something that's in your ear, it can know a lot about you. It certainly knows your heart rate. It can see blood oxygen, believe it or not. It might have even be able to read blood pressure. And it can talk to you. And so Apple with the AirPods is at the very earliest stages of this. You tap the AirPod in your ear twice and you can talk to Siri and Siri can talk to you and no one around you can hear what Siri is saying. And this is one of the reasons people want wearables, this idea that you could wear glasses or uh, have a watch or something that would indicate to you kind of without anybody knowing information about the world around you. And, and in-ear devices, I think, may well be kind of the, the perfect place to put these kinds of wearables. So I was interested from that angle, too. Uh, a friend of mine has a hearing aids that work with the iPhone. They're from a company called Starkey, one of the big hearing aid manufacturers. This is a U.S.-based ma hearing man aid manufacturer. They're out of California, out of Berkeley, actually. Uh, and they their Starkey Halo product works with the iPhone. But you'll notice if you go to accessibility on the iPhone that part of accessibility is hearing aids. And so there are a number of iPhone-ready hearing aids. And that's, these are kind of neat. They give you a couple of additional features. For instance, it can use the GPS in the phone to have different settings. So you can have a setting for a particular restaurant or concert hall or movie theater. And when you walk into that place, the hearing aid will automatically change its equalization, change its level to match that place. You set it ahead of time. And then every time from then on, it will automatically respond that way. I think that's kind of cool. You can control it directly from the interface of the smartphone. And with at least iPhones, I haven't been able to get this working with Android, but with iPhones, uh, you can listen to music or, in my case, audiobooks or radio through the hearing aids. So I can be walking around wearing my hearing aids and listening to the radio. It's really great during the important baseball games. You're old enough yeah, you know, to you... remember when I was a kid, and I bet you remember, during the World Series, you'd be sitting in sixth grade with a transistor radio in your ear and hoping the teacher didn't notice. <laughs> right? Yes, I do. I remember <laughs> under my pillow at night. Away from yeah, my... same thing. Right. So, well, so you make it sound great, but when I went to the Costco for a, 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 a test, a test drive, and they gave me, they have two models there, and I, I don't remember the brand names because I'm on the road and so I don't have the literature with me, but. One was, I think, three grand a pair, and one was 15. Yeah, they're horrifically expensive. To, yeah, tremendously. But it, they were also very jarring. I stuck it in my ear, and I walked around the store, and it sounded kind of tinny. Well, and that was one of the things I did learn by getting them, and I don't wear mine very often, uh, is that I, w I had hopes that they would be hi-fi. And hearing aids yeah. are not designed to be high fidelity. They're designed to do one thing, make it easier to understand voices. 
So the amplification the, the, is all in the vocal range. And it also amplifies stuff that you and I haven't been hearing for a while, high-end frequencies. So I would hear my shoes against the carpet. I'd hear my clothes rustling. <laughs> Things I didn't hear, I hadn't heard in years, and didn't want to hear. <laughs> Not only that, and this is probably was the most jarring to you, no hearing aid uh, covers your, you know, blocks your hearing. It doesn't replace your hearing, it augments your hearing. So you hear your voice coming through your head and slightly later, just a little bit later, a millisecond or two later, through the hearing aid, which gives it a, a, an odd uh, chorusing effect. And all of these things you get used to, but initially uh, it actually takes some training. And, and in fact, a good audiologist, if you spend time with them, will give you things, homework, things to do to train yourself to get used to the hearing aids. In other words... It isn't this holy grail. In fact, I'm a little bit more interested in what Apple's doing with the AirPods. I think uh, you could make the case that Apple is very is is moving in that direction. Now, those are full fidelity, right? Those can reproduce music, so uh, they they might make really an interesting hearing aid for people. Uh, music would sound better if it because they have microphones built in too, so they could pick up. Uh, you could go to a concert and they'd pick up the sound, correct it for your hearing loss. And, and pump it into your ears, and suddenly you'd be hearing the music like you heard it when you were 21. But this is not here yet. Interesting. So when you bought your mother a pair, what did you get her? Uh, Starkey Halos. She hasn't bought them yet, but she went to the audiologist to get fitted. Uh, the yeah. Resound is an R-E-Z-O-U-N-D, another company that does uh, smartphone aware, and I haven't tried them. But I am sure, I, it's my understanding, they're all doing essentially the same thing because they, they, they're coming from the point of view of let's make, the, what, is the, what is the problem they're solving? As you get older, it's harder to understand what people are saying. And that's the most important problem. Not, uh, you know, understanding dialogue in movies, not hearing full fidelity concert sound. That is not what a hearing aid is designed to do. So I think it's important to understand the limitations and what the mm -hmm. technology is doing. In other words, it didn't, it, it wasn't, I, I did this to learn and that's what I learned. <laughs> so for me, mission accomplished, but should you spend thousands of dollars on a hearing aid? Well, only if what, you're ha what you want to fix is the ability to understand what people are saying to you at a restaurant, uh, in a TV or, or movie, that kind of thing. I think that's true. I'm at the point where it's kind of embarrassing to say, yeah. pardon me, what? what did you say? Yep. Or, yep. I, I hate that. My wife made me get them. And usually it's, our, it's, it's often our significant others who say, honey, <laughs> we're going to the audiologist today because I'm tired of you not hearing me. Yes. Yeah, so or turning up the TV really loud. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you. Thanks, Paul. Have you heard anything about the uh, uh, well, Phantom 5? The new DJI Phantom? DJI? Yeah, the... a, I heard rumors of a Phantom 5 uh. coming out. Have you heard any? No, I don't. I haven't. Uh, I am not the, uh, as you probably know, it sounds like you listen to our shows, I am not the the drone expert. We have a a, a, a priest. <laughs> we call him the, 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 uh, the drone father who is uh, our expert. And I'll ask Father Robert if he knows anything about a new version of DJI. DJI's. Those Phantoms are the best drones out there right now. Really cool. Nice to talk to you. Thanks, Paul. Leo Laporte, the tech guy.